Oh, dude, I'm glad you're here. Oh, hey, man, what's up? Oh, man, I just picked up this awesome new incubator. You know, the Sony Egg Blaster 9000? Man, this thing is sweet. Eight microcomputer fans, five layers of heat wrap, 12 thermostats, and it has Bluetooth audio. So when those egg hatch, they're going to hatch out to the classic Africa by Toto. I mean, this thing is sweet, man. So, uh, what are you using, by the way? Oh, uh, well, you know, it's a uh, custom. Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about how to make your own incubator, what it costs, and how mine's worked out for me so far. Let's check it out. for incubators for a couple months before deciding to build my own and it really came down to the point where it was either way out of my budget like six eight hundred dollars for one or it was within my budget but they had some mixed reviews and of course when you're trying to make a business out of breeding reptiles the last thing you need is an incubator that's gonna kill all your eggs one year so starting out of the shell of the incubator, I just use a cooler from Walmart. I think I got it for like 20 bucks. And then I just got a little, you know, uh, micro shelf or mini shelf that you're supposed to have like, or probably notebooks or something. I also got that at Walmart for just a few dollars. Then I grabbed a microcomputer fan on Amazon for a couple bucks. And then also I had some heat tape lying around, but you can also get that online for not very much. And then the last thing I grabbed was the thermostat, which is the one item you do not want to cheap out on. This is going to be what's thermoregulating the eggs and then making sure that the heat's at the proper temperature. Personally, I grabbed one of the uh, Vivarium Electronics thermostat. Make sure you get the VE200. That's the one that's going to have the um, more parallel heating, so it's going to control what percentage of the thermostat's being used to heat it, rather than just the usual thermostats that just kind of get it to peak level, let it drop a few degrees, and then kick back on. It's very important to get a thermostat that sets that temperature at whatever degree you set and lets it stay there, versus ones that let it drop a few degrees and kick back on. Even the temperature fluctuation of a few degrees at that, that, you know, daily rate is not going to be as good as the eggs as one that just stays consistent. Hey there. So you have your list of materials that you need. Now let's go over to my incubator and we'll take a little tour on how I set everything up. So here it is, uh, like I said, you know, really nothing fancy. The one thing I do want to do is cut an indent into the lid so we can, I can have the wires go in without this gap. The gap's really not that good, but just the temperature that I've been using the eggs at, I've only needed, you know, 70 to 74, so it hasn't been too big of an issue because it's usually around room temp in here. But if you're wanting something higher, like for king snake eggs, for example, those are going to be more in the higher 80s, you're going to want uh, that sealed in completely. And then here we are inside, uh, fairly simple, you know, I just put the heat tape on the bottom and I put the shelf on top. It's always better to have whatever your, your egg box is or anything like that to be not directly on the heat source because it's better just to have the ambient temps on there versus surface temps heating up the actual box. Um, just for the incubator or the egg, you know, tray thing, I just used an old, like a bead container. And then of course I have the probe right in there, so it reads whatever the temperature is in the egg tray, not just the cooler. I'm pretty much out of eggs for this season. These are the, the last two we're gonna be having. Um, I've switched mediums back and forth. Sometimes I use the Rapashi Super Hatch. I like that because when it dries out, it shows a different color, so it kinda, it's a little easier for me to let me know, oh, this needs more water. And for this run, I just, I ran out of the uh, Super Hatch, so I just use Vermiculite. And both have been working, I've had success with both, but I just like the Super Hatch better for the, um, that color changing when drying out reason. And there you have it, a uh, real simple incubator to make, you know, not pretty, but it gets the job done. Um, so far I've hatched out six crested gecko eggs and then five mountain horn dragon eggs using this incubator. Now, as a disclaimer, you know, they are a little more of a temperate egg incubation. I had it really set around 74 degrees and, you know, I had it set from spring to now still fall. Uh, so for the most part, it really did just take egg incubation. It wasn't heating up too much. Uh, closer to now, it is on pretty constantly. But I will be using this incubator next season when I have my Mexican black king snake eggs. So we'll see how it does a little better in the higher 80s and I'll probably make like a little update video on them. 
Well, there you have it guys. Just a simple little incubator to make. This thing cost me probably around $250 altogether. Now, that sounds kind of expensive for what it is, but you gotta remember that 80% of that cost is the thermostat that I'm using. Also, all in all, really everything else cost me, I don't know, like 50 bucks maybe. And when you're thinking about, you know, from the good incubators from six to $900 to this one that's not pretty, but it does the job. Uh, for like 250 you know, I decided to make a little do-it-yourself one. And that's pretty much gonna wrap up the video today. Let me know what you think of my little incubator. Um, if you like the video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or breeding projects, you can follow me on Instagram at DVCV Exotics, where we are also on Facebook. And other than that, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.